Hey, good people, Batavia here. We're in the backyard garden and I wanna share with y'all the cabbage harvest, as well as my check-in on the carrots that were basically growing underneath the cabbage. So you could see how they're bent over. Oh, two, <laughs> oh, two grasshoppers. My great aunt told me I should have a stick and I should poke around in these beds before I put my hands in. Uh, uh, both were growing in the raised bed, one of them that sits on top of my concrete patio, which actually creates its own set of challenges, which we'll cover off on. I transplanted in both some cauliflower transplants as well as cabbage. I picked both of those up from your big box home improvement stores. I just had the worst time trying to start those from seed. Still working at it though. I added just a bit of compost. The bed had already been amended. So for each planting hole, I added some compost. And uh, you'll see an odd thing. So I actually have on a disposable glove and generally I like to work without gloves but because I'm digging into some compost which sometimes is kind of muddy and I mean there's manure <laughs> I would put on gloves but I don't want kind of that to stain my regular garden gloves right so that's where insert disposable gloves I'm not saying that it's fully logical but it, it makes me comfortable um, I also direct sowed radishes in the center and then I direct sow carrot seeds on the edge, which you can see the carrot tops here. And that actually wasn't the best planting idea. As the cabbage plants grew, they ended up leaning much more towards kind of following the sun as the sun comes over and goes from east to west through my yard. And they ended up shading out the carrots quite a bit. We originally left it the bed bare. Um, I really like to add mulch as quickly as I plant. Um, however, because I direct sowed some seeds, especially with carrot seeds, which tend to be hard to, to germinate, I wanted to be able to see those things germinate before I started covering the bed with mulch. Um, so I do that with most beds that I'm direct sowing, but not necessarily all. Um, it was early in the season, so I didn't have to worry as much about um, the heat drying out the soil, which generally is a problem, but it's even more so a problem as it's sitting the bed itself is sitting on concrete because there's no earth underneath it to be able to pull moisture from, right? You'll find that um, I have netting on this bed, which is kind of a default for me. I prefer to cover my beds. I don't use a lot of sprays, pesticides, or things of that nature in my garden. My default for plants that kind of draw in bugs is to cover them. Um, the cover def definitely doesn't, you know, help things like aphids, um, but it absolutely helps either prevent, depending on the cover, or minimize the damage that your cabbage moth does, which is one of my number one garden pests. So I had three plants remaining. One looked really good. It was still intact, but two of them had split. And I know that as soon as something like that happens to a plant, it's like a nest for bugs. And then I also read online that it, um, it can make the cabbage leaves tougher and generally it's, it's not as um, easy to store. The storage isn't as long as you would store a head of cabbage if it was whole. And what I'll be doing is really kind of pulling away a lot of the cabbage leaves to try to get down to kind of where um, the kind of viable kind of plant is. And so able to do that, really still please, um, the one head that I harvested that was whole, I basically, once I pull the outer leaves off, put it in a plastic bag, put it in my crisper. The two heads that were split because I knew I'd be using them pretty soon, um, like within the next day or two, I cleaned them up outside, which you'll see I do that um, when it comes to some of my bigger plants. I try to clean them up a little bit outside before I take them inside, just to try to minimize how much how many bugs basically I'm bringing into my kitchen. Um, and so in a case like where I'm able to clean them inside of um, that container, I'm also able just to add that water back to the garden, whether it's adding it to a raised bed, adding it to some flowers, or adding it to a container where I'm growing some veggies. The two heads made 20 cups of uh, shredded cabbage and I used it in a bunch of different ways. I made my favorite cabbage roll soup um, and it puts me in the mind of chili, which I'm a huge fan of. It's like a, one of my like top five foods that I enjoy or meals that I enjoy. So cabbage roll soup, able to eat a couple of servings fresh and then freeze some. And then I made um, a coconut 
cabbage, sweet potato soup as well. So definitely different flavor palette. Again, able to eat a couple of servings of that, then freeze a couple of servings. I did leave out the coconut for the servings I froze just to try to make sure that it keeps a little bit longer. And then I had some for refrigerator recipes. Two types of coleslaw, creamy coleslaw, which is pretty traditional, and then a pickled coleslaw. And finally, again, still with the 20 cups of cabbage, I was able to try my hand at sauerkraut. Um, and so that had been fermenting in the basement for a few weeks. The jury's still out on if I'm a huge fan of it. But we're gonna go ahead and get to the carrot check-in. All right, so carrot tops look good, but the real question is how about the root? So this is like an 11 inch bed there's nine or ten inches of soil at this point soil always escapes throughout the season let's see what we get oh oh, <laughs> oh that's a beauty this is so encouraging this makes me happy this is such a good example of how even when you don't have optimal growing conditions you can still make something out of this i mean healthy beautiful nutritious carrot from a backyard in a bed on top of concrete 